Hello, in this video we're going to solve this absolute value inequality. We have the absolute value of x squared plus 6x plus 1, and it's greater than 8. So let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So I haven't done this problem yet, but I have an idea. So first let me just refresh your memory on a property of absolute values. So recall, if you have something like the absolute value of u, greater than a, where a is a positive number, this implies that u is actually bigger than a, or u is smaller than minus a. And the reason that this is true is because the absolute value of u is the distance between u and zero on the number line. And so if the distance between u and zero on the number line is bigger than a, that means that u must be a number bigger than a or smaller than negative a. So graphically, it would look like this. This would be your zero, this is a, this is negative a, and then so based on this example with u, um, the solution set would be sketched and it would look something like this in yellow. Anyways, let's go ahead and apply this idea to our particular problem and see what happens. So this takes the place of our u, so we have x squared plus 6x plus 1, and that's going to be bigger than 8, or x squared plus 6x plus 1, that's going to be less than negative 8. All right, so in order to solve these quadratic inequalities, typically what you do is you want 0 on one side, and then you want uh, a single term on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8 here. That'll give us x squared plus 6x minus 7 greater than 0. And this should factor. So let's see. This is parentheses, 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 x and x. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to 6. So plus 7. And minus 1 should do the job because 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. If you take um, 7 plus negative 1, you get 6. So all is good. So we're going to come back to this in a minute and we're going to solve it using something called the test point method. But for now, let's go ahead and work on this one. So over here, we can add 8 to the both sides. So we get x squared plus 6x plus 9, and that's going to be less than 0. And again, this should factor. It looks like it's going to be just x plus 3 quantity squared, right? This is called a perfect square trinomial. Um, so it factors perfectly. And you could check. You square the x, you get x squared. Multiply these and double them, you get 6x. Square the 3, you get 9. So this second inequality actually has no solution, right? There's no real numbers that satisfy this inequality because whenever you have a real number squared, it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero, right? In general, if u is real, u squared is greater than or equal to zero for all values of u that are real. So here we're only dealing with real numbers in this problem. This is an algebra problem. So we're done with this, right? No issues here. So basically now we just have to solve this and that's going to be the answer to our original inequality, which is pretty cool. So I'm kind of glad that this one has no solution. Uh, it's, it's a lot less work <laughs> uh, for us. So now we're going to use something called the test point method. I'm going to explain this. Test point method. And this is a method that's usually taught uh, in most algebra books. And so the method says basically that you want zero on one side and a single term on the other. So that's why I factored. We basically have one thing here. Then what you do is you set each piece, or each factor in this case, equal to zero. So we'll set x plus 7 equal to zero. So this is not an algebraic move, right? We're just doing this because the method tells us to do this. A lot of people get really confused. They think, oh, whenever you see this, this is what you do algebraically. It doesn't really follow algebraically, right? This does not imply this algebraically. This is just a method known as the test point method where this is the next step. Here we subtract 7, so we get this. Here we add 1, so we get this. Good stuff. So now we can just plot these on a number line, right? And then pick test points. So there's my number line. 
oh, that's a pretty good line. It's harder to draw straight lines. I'm writing on a tablet and it's a little bit harder. It's hard to write. So my handwriting is so bad. And then you pick test points. You want to pick one number in each of these intervals and plug it into your inequality. If it's true, you're going to shade. If it's not true, you don't shade. So let's just go ahead and do it so you see what I mean. Uh, let's pick a number smaller than negative seven. How about, how about negative eight? So check negative eight. So you take the negative eight and you plug it into your inequality. So negative eight plus seven, and then negative eight minus one. And you wanna see if that's greater than zero. So it's gonna be negative one times negative nine. And that's certainly greater than zero. So yes, I was, I was right, yes, yes. So that means we shade here. So we're gonna shade all of this. Now we need a number between negative seven and one. So we can check zero. There's a trick, by the way. I basically know this one's not gonna check and this one is. Um, but that only works when your factors are linear like this. So let's just go ahead and check all of them for completeness. So zero plus seven, and then zero minus one, greater than zero, negative seven greater than zero. No, it's an epic fail, right? So we don't shade here, because it's not true. If it was true, we would shade. And now let's pick another number. How about two? Because two is a number bigger than one. So let's check, check two. So we get two plus seven, and then two minus one. And we want to see if that's greater than zero. So two plus seven is nine. Uh, two minus one is one. Is that greater than zero? Yes, yes it is. It is greater than zero, so we shade here. And because we have a strict inequality or a strong inequality, we're gonna use parentheses like this. And so now we can write the answer. The answer is gonna be, right, this is a number line, so it goes on forever. So negative infinity to negative seven. Union and then parentheses one to infinity. So kind of a fun problem, a little bit um, harder than like your typical algebra problem. Not super hard or anything, but um, a little bit different. Um, you don't see a, a lot of these uh, in textbooks. Most of the problems don't have absolute values and a quadratic on the inside. So a little bit more interesting, but yeah, I hope, I hope this video has been helpful and hopefully you've learned something. Until next time, take care.